Yes, this is it. The mansion, which is based on the game Clock Tower. This guy has a very unique mechanic. At the very beginning, you cannot run. You have to hide. I think we get like a little warning that he'll be showing up and then you have to find a hiding place otherwise he insta kills you. You get no chance of running. What is this? Wow what a mansion inside another mansion. Maybe I've made it all the way to the end of the house. Maybe this is a resting place or another entrance perhaps. Whatever the case I think this is a good spot to rest. So there's, there's a wardrobe here I think you can hide in it. Similar to like Amnesia the Dark Descent. I somehow managed to get away, but I don't know how long. I hear him, even when I know he's not there. Isaki isn't even real, but instead my own fears manifest themselves and stalking me. Every time I enter a room I'm going to look for a hiding spot just in case. This mansion is strange. I think the bricks and wood are actually just painted on. Everything still feels kind of fake. Also I keep hearing movement and voices below me. Maybe other survivors are hiding down there. The red fog that's in the distance is really nice. Makes it look a lot more freaky. Also adds some more uniqueness to the level design. Just makes it look a bit more fresh, you know? Hide. So when I heard that music, that means he's around. So every time you hear it, that's your hint to stay hidden. There, he's in the room. Those of you that have played Clock Tower may find this song a bit familiar. It does sound a bit like the actual music from the uh, 90s game. Ooh, it's a 3D model. There, he's left. And I've got a key for the library. This door looks a lot different than the others. I wonder if that's intentional. Or whether they just accidentally forgot to add the correct texture. Ooh, lots of wine. So this must be the hiding spot. I can hear him coming down the hallway. I need to hide but don't know where. I now know this is not an exit or a resting place, it's just another specimen room. I think it's outside the door now. Eventually when you leave the mansion I think you escape through the basement, he then chases you like a normal monster. He's saying something. It's a shame all these wine bottles are 2D, I would have liked it if they were 3D. Okay he's gone. I can only change the camera when I'm hiding so I can't move WASD. I'm a fucking idiot, I forgot what key I've just picked up. I can hear the music straight away so I'm just going to hide here. I don't know why this is a hiding spot, look at the gap. It's obvious he'll be able to see me. If I can see him clear as day, how come he can't see me at all? I wouldn't have guessed that the mansion decided to possess Helen fucking Keller. There's a book, nice. No, literally unplayable. You can't play the piano. God damn it, Spookies. You're always meant to be able to play the piano in video games. Oh wow, all this dirt is like floating in the air. It's actually moving as well. We're in the basement, so the gameplay has changed for this man. He's going to chase us like a normal monster in a moment. I have a theory. I think this is a pseudo mansion. Everything is playing with my head. I still hear him. I must find that man and kill him with the sickle I found in the forest. Oh, he found a sickle. So I found an axe. So many corpses here. Looks like we've got to run back. Oh, there's another door here. We're in room 810 and it's not changing. Oh, we've got to hide. Again, I'm always wrong. When I say we got into the basement, the gameplay changes and you don't have to hide. But here we are, hiding from him. I'm such a donad. What the hell is he doing in the basement anyway? Bloody hell, it's been like 20 seconds. I should look around first. Oh, there's another key. Exit key. I've just realised something. The notes. That man says I need to kill that monster with the sickle I found in the forest. But we're getting chased by a guy with a sickle. Oh my god! There he is. The mansion is constantly possessing people, so it possessed some dude. And then this guy, when he was normal, he came to the mansion. And he ended up getting possessed. Oh, so there was the exit door. Well, this dude is slow as fuck. Don't let him touch you though, he's very nasty. 
Oh no, this is a square room, this is bad. Oh man, he's still nowhere in sight anyway, because he's so slow. So the mansion decides to possess a dude who is not only near completely blind, but is also very, very slow. At least he can break down doors very easily. He's got that going for him at least. But then again, even the little tiny worm can do that. As for upcoming monsters, as far as I'm aware, I can only think of two. There's one that appears after room 900, which is based on Amnesia the Dark Descent. And then there's the final boss. Oh, always scares me. Every time. Oh, bloody hell. I didn't expect that at all. The Meat Man can go through walls. I believe the Wendigo monster can also do the same. I hate it when he does that, when he hides the doors away from you. It's just fortunate that these rooms repeat so often. You can actually just guess where the doors are anyway. Oh, the brain jar room. Oh! I feel like such an idiot. I can't believe I've done that. My punishment is to go through the shittest room in the entire game. I hate this so much. So that brain jar room, I remember reading about it in a patch note and I wasn't sure what it was. That was why I just started to attack it. I didn't know what was going to happen. And I'm really annoyed because the checkpoints are ages away. I'm in room 102 for fuck's sake. I'm so salty right now. Especially as I just had to go through that bloody room. You have to choose one possible direction out of three and it's so horrible. I'm not even scared of that spider anymore, I'm just annoyed at this point. This was such a surprise that there would be another entry. Another actual entry, one I could admire. But then as suddenly as it came it left. And now you disband. Your inspiration and influence will never leave me. The first time I saw that I was absolutely cacking it. I don't know what the rules are for this room. <gasps> oh! Other than get scared to shit, of course. Puppet man. Oh no. Ah, ah, cobble cut out. Strangely enough, I can't hear his song. It's playing some other music instead. I wonder if that's a bug or not. Oh, oh. Looks like he's got his hand out to hook me. I've noticed that nail he's holding looks very similar to the weapon that's used to kill the uh, Pac-Man in that minigame. Dude is persistent. He's probably the most common appearing enemy in the game. We've seen him like what, four or five times now? Didn't even flinch at that one. And that one. Awesome. I'm getting desensitized to the scares. At least the cardboard cutouts anyway. Probably because I'm still a bit salty that I died attacking the brain jar and I had to do the mansion all over again. Fortunately, we are approaching room 900 though. So at least I'm going to complete the game at last. There you are. Little fucker. I'm not going to attack it, I'm just leaving. I'll have to have a look at the wiki when I'm done with this and find out if the brain jar does do anything else or not or whether it's simply there just to uh, kill people stupid enough to hit the jar like me okay that did make me jump a bit then so looks like I was telling yet another lie about being uh, immune to the cardboard monsters this is it excellent we are going to complete spookies at last Good thing too because I seriously take the piss when it comes to recording videos. Oh, this is nice. Wooden floors, old stone walls. Reminds me a bit of Amnesia the Dark Descent. In Amnesia, there's several monsters that appear throughout the game. One of which is an invisible sea creature. And that's exactly what we're going to be up against. In Amnesia, you are safe if you stand on cardboard boxes. The monster has to stay in the water. The only thing you can see is the splashes. So you never actually view the monster itself. You only get to see the splash as it travels along. Research report one. More whales are being shipped to the facility tomorrow. 
one for the health inspection and two that are already dead for autopsies. More and more beach whales keep appearing around the islands and I still can't find out what is causing it. Research report 2. Whale 14D has strange small bite marks. They appear from another smaller mammal but the strangest thing about them is their placement. They are in even rows inside the whale's stomach, all about 5 feet from the bottom of the stomach lining. Report 3. Whale 015A is still alive but gets into fits of thrashing and is surfacing more often than natural. I think there may be a problem with its lungs, but I don't have any tools that would allow me to check without it dying. I will have to allow it to die from whatever it is causing it, and then do an autopsy. Research Report 4. Whale 015D has died much sooner than I expected while I was away on holiday. I regret not being here, but have had estimated it would have lived much longer. The team that did the autopsy said nothing seemed to be wrong with the lungs, but the stomach had a circular hole about two feet in diameter all the way through the outside of the whale. That pretty much confirms a parasite is the cause of death. Research Report 5 The research facility is now in dire need of more engineers. We have a whole block that is flooded, and some vital staff members are missing. Report 6 I hear a girl, or an animal, or something, singing to me, pleading that I come outside my locked room and let the sweeping waves comfort me. Report 7 All the staff is gone, only I remain. For no purpose I remain here resisting the call from behind the sealed door, but I will remain as long as I can. Do not open that door. Excerpt 4132 And then I watched carelessly as the sea rose above the sky, casting waving shadows over the world. I saw the silhouettes of creatures both familiar and forgotten, and suddenly I found myself falling upwards towards an ocean of darkness. Just like amnesia, you are safe if you stand on top of the crates. That's her, she's a siren. She's also naked, she's got nippleless boobs. I should look around first. Now that we've triggered her, we can open the door. Amnesia to chase against this monster is super tense. It's also cool because you can barricade the doors with like barrels and stuff just to try and slow it down. In some points, there's a barricade in front of you, and so you have to try and break it down while you're getting chased. Very scary. For those of you that have already completed Amnesia, they recently added achievements to it, so that could be another reason to go back to it. Also, it's got a very cool developer's commentary mode. If you've ever played Half-Life 2, that was the blatant inspiration for it. In Half-Life, there's a mode called developer commentary where every so often at certain points in the game, you see these speech bubbles and you can click on them. If you do, you hear one of the developers speaking to you, telling you about the scene that you're in and their inspirations behind it and any problems they had, the mechanics, why they did things the way they did. Oh, oh, there she goes. And it was really nice to see it in Amnesia The Dark Descent. I wish more games did that because that was actually one of my absolute favourite things about Half-Life. They also did it for the Left 4 Dead games, uh, if you play it in single player. She only chases me when I'm in the water, so even though I'm really far away from her, if I stand on a crate, she will always stop moving. So she is actually quite far away at the moment. However, every time you enter a door, like every other monster, their location always resets. We got away from her, cool. Only one more monster now, and that's the final boss. That's of course unless one of the regulars decides to pay us a visit, which I believe they will. I doubt that we're going to go through 80 entire rooms without at least one at least one appearance by uh, another monster. When I was reading out all those notes, I'm not sure if I was actually able to find every single research note, because there was like eight of them in total, weren't there? I am sorry if I have missed one of them. If you do want to see every single note in the game, along with a load of other cool stuff, do check out the Spooky's Wiki. If you just Google Spooky's House Wiki, you'll see it immediately. It's an excellent website. It's very well made. A lot of wikis are incredibly incomplete, and are really lacking in information, such as the Longest Journey wiki for like Dreamfall chapters for instance, that's incredibly lacking. My absolute favourite game wikis are this one Spookies and one called Viscera Cleanup Detail. There's one particular member of the Viscera wiki that maintains it 
and it's super in depth. If you've never heard of it, check it out on Steam. It's a PC game and it's a hell of a lot of fun. It's very relaxing. The Five Nights at Freddy's wiki is also really good. Wendigo, I recognise the music. Well, I say music, it's more like just constant static for the first part of it. If you buy the soundtrack for this, I think you get a version without the static as well, and it does sound really nice. We got away from him, super easy. I really hope there's a save before the final boss, because I don't know what to do. One thing I'll remember, though, I may be wrong, is the boss will throw an orb at you, and you hit it back with the axe, and you keep repeating it until you hit him. But in the original game you can hit the axe super fast, but in this one you have to charge it up a little bit. It's the repeating room. I didn't recognise it was that room due to the layout looking different. It was very scary the very first time I saw it, but this is the third one now that I've entered this room. And you get used to it. 21 rooms. I'm really worried because I think the final boss is going to kill me and I'm not sure if there's a save point. Before, I mentioned the passwords like cheese, cake, pie. In the original game, there was a password to reach level 1000, room 1000 I mean, and the password was donut. I've actually tried it, the password donut does not work. The password itself is really weird, even though you see a keyboard layout, you can't actually type it with the keyboard. You have to use your mouse and press the buttons on the screen. I'm not getting involved in the brain jar. Not after what happened last time, especially now that I'm at room 990. Yes, there is a save point. This is it. Time to complete the game. And if we die, it doesn't matter because we're already at the save point. And what ending we're going to get. I really hope it's the one where you get to see Spooky. There's two main endings as far as I know. One of which is about Spooky and the other one is more about what happens to you. It's unusual that there's a save point five rooms before the last boss. Why not have the save point in the room before the last boss so you don't have to travel for those five rooms if you lose? Seems really weird. Ah, oh, this is a unique door. Ah, you had to hit it with the chain. Here we are, we're in paradise. Can't move. Oh, well, I can. Sorry. Once again, I am wrong about absolutely everything to do with this game. Very pretty. Looks fake as shit, though. The sound is cutting out. This is deliberate. Vista Sky Fatal Error. Screensaver has been disabled. Time for the real room to show itself. I'm taking all those logs they keep throwing out and I'm nailing them together. That was unusual the way the door opens. Oh wow. I died. No, this isn't a death screen. It's final boss. Oh, 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 no, no, no. Don't let him touch you, he is a one hit kill. There's the orb, I think we've got to hit the orb back at him. And then hit him. That's it, kick the shit out of him. No, nice. this dude's easy as pie. Now he's trying to get me with the hand. Bloody hell, this is freaky. Come on, give it to me, you bastard. Right, this dude's far easier than I originally expected. Oh, 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 that was super close then. Oh wow, he's summoning more friends. 
Alright, nothing else. Just me and him. Here we go. This bitch is toast. Yes, we did it. We completed Spookies. Well, you died. In a pretty tragic way, too. Just tragic enough for you to become a ghost. Good job, by the way, making it this far. So buckle up, soldier, because now I finally think we have enough troops to invade. The time has come, my loyal troops. No longer shall we be called cute or adorable. No longer will we be disregarded and ignored. For now, we are the most feared army in the world. And we got the ending I was after. For the other ending, if you remember the note about the mansion, it says that when it possesses people, the people that are possessed take on weapons based on their traits. We received a note earlier by a dude who says that he's picked up a sickle. In the ending you get if you use the axe too much against the deer and the cardboard cutouts, what occurs is you become possessed by the mansion, running around with an axe roaming the halls. But that's the end of Spookies. I'll next be back in the game when I finally release Karamari Hospital, and I really look forward to that. Take care, and I'll see you again.